Hello guys, Nato AC, and this will be a follow-up on my thoughts on the Netflix Cowboy Biba. So now I want to kind of give my thoughts on that, yes, it wasn't a surprise that the show got canceled. To some extent, it probably, you know, they had it coming because of the situation, because of the decision they made that I don't think the fans even the viewers gonna appreciate so i mean it is what it is they had it coming you know that's what's gonna happen and that uh, to some extent i kind of felt sorry for certain people in the series like john Choi, because believe it or not the guy did try his best to basically say hey you know we're gonna do our best hopefully you like it but you know and that to some extent mustafa kind of did it also, he did make a comment. He said that, well, the quote-unquote haters were right, which is, again, maybe, but to some extent, it is not a hater thing. It's people being critical because it's a beloved franchise and you guys trying to change the narrative, i.e. Ghostbusters 2016. You know what happened to that one? Story wasn't good. The architect, for whatever reason, like, why choose that? Is there a story behind it? Unfortunately, to some extent, most fans were said, no. Even James Rolfe, when he said, well, it doesn't really look good, so i really not going to watch it. But unfortunately, because, oh, James said he's not going to watch it, therefore, automatically, because, oh, what, because of he was for female? I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the actress there, they're cool. But again, the story just wasn't good. The mission objective for that movie just wasn't good. So, I mean, same goes with Cowboy Bebop. So, I mean, it is unfortunate that Mustafa did say haters rather than the fans or the community or the viewers. Because it's not to some extent, but again, it is what it is there. So, yeah, I mean, had it coming. It's kind of unfortunate to some extent, but... Nobody's going to be sad about it. And so the follow-up is I want to do a pro and con about the Netflix Cowboy Bebop. I mean, yes, again, I said it before, I am going to say, why do they need to do a Cowboy Bebop live action? Whatever. They've done a lot of live action. Some are good. Some are bad. Like I said, another anime that people actually did enjoy from what I understand. I could be wrong, but I heard the story was actually good. Everything was interesting to watch, minus the main actress, the heroine, because they made her supposed to look like the anime with the big eyes. That was just unnecessary, but from what I understand, the story was one-to-one. Different story there. So, what are the pros and cons about the Cowboy Bebop Netflix film? Well, first of all, pro more exposure for people who don't watch anime or don't know Cowboy Bebop or to some extent are not fans of the anime. Sometimes when live action are created because believe it or not there are a lot of people who are not fans of cartoon or anime. It's a shocker even in Japan there have been YouTube videos you can check out that people say a reaction from Japanese people who are not into anime and you'll be surprised what it is so what's an alternative to making you like the franchise do a live action you can also do a book comic audio whatever but then they decide to say why not let's do a live action okay whatever there that's a pro another pro actors and actresses actually get a gig build their repertoire at least they can say, hey, you know, I did this. If it's either good or bad, but at least they have something to do. Maybe make money. I know they're not really losing money. They got other gigs, but to some extent, more the better. To some extent, if you love acting. So it's a good opportunity to some extent with John Choi, Mustafa, the lady who plays Ed. Even I know Daniela Pineda. Fortunately, of course, you know her attitude about it, so kind of shoot herself in the foot. You know, not really good idea, but again, it is what it is there. But they do have at least something there. I mean, the same 
point with, I know it's going to be a bad movie, everybody knows, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Why did John Leguizamo, Bob Hoskin, and Dennis Hopper took the gig? It was a job. We'll build up our repertoire, make money, make a living. Again, sometimes it is what it is. There's a reason behind it, but it is what it is there. So they kind of like get something more, build up their repertoire. That's the pro. And then we come with the con. What are the cons of the Cowboy People Netflix? One is one-to-one source. Most live action will not going to be one-to-one to the anime or whatever. Comic to a movie, cartoon to a movie. Look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're not really one-to-one. The DCEU Universe, same deal. Some are good, some are bad. Again, it is what it is. So you can have that kind of concern there. Second, uh, depends who in, are involved is you're gonna end up, hopefully, they'll either respect the source material or they have a propaganda agenda. That's a problem. Case in point with the Cowboy Bebop, well, someone has an agenda. They change some of the premise, they change the storyline, change the presentation for certain characters, their representation, and to some extent with Cowboy Bebop, quote unquote, there were political elements, i.e. woke. Again, I'm not so much of a Cowboy Bebop fan, I did watch the anime, good story. I did try to watch the Cowboy Bebop, the live action, they're long in my opinion, should have been 30 minutes. And they were long to something when I felt it was kind of slow. But again, I heard people, there were a lot of political issues there. Again, shoving it in purposely, having an agenda, that's not a good idea. And that's a lot of people kind of thought about the Ghostbusters 2016. Because some people say, well, why can't I have a female Ghostbuster? Nobody said you can't. There was a cartoon Ghostbusters, the next generation, there was a female Ghostbusters there. It's not that they can't, it's that you gotta do it right. The problem with the Ghostbusters 2016, they didn't do it right. There was no reason behind it. It's just, well, why not? So in the case with Cowboy Bebop, why can't Faye be like this proud woman, powerful woman? Nobody said you can't, but again, you got someone who said, oh, boo hoo hoo they're voicing their concern, automatically hater. It's like, well, why can't we do it our way? Why do we have to do it by the source material? Exactly, because it shows respect to the creator. You can't do your own thing, but if you want to do your own thing, why call it Cowboy Bebop? Why not just call it something else? See, that's the problem. Like, to some extent, yeah, it doesn't have to be one-to-one, but it has to be at least close. To some extent, this one is not even close. Jet Black's premise in the Netflix one, way different. Faye Valentine, way different there. Again, I don't know what about Ed because she's supposed to be going to be a key point in season two, which there isn't. Again, there's always like propaganda, revelation, master of the universe to some extent. There's always sort of a propaganda there, some political because why he man should be the hero. Well, that's the history of He-Man. Just saying that. Nobody said that women always have to be damsel in distress. You know that crazy lady who whines about that? No, but it has to work. Don't shove it in. You have to have context behind it. That's I'm just saying there. And the problem is, there wasn't in Cowboy Bebop. There was just left and right political issue there. Like, do you really have to force in a representative for to a particular group? Don't know. Probably wasn't a good idea. And there you go. Like, just have a good story and that's it. That's all they want. They don't need to have political agenda. When you do that, that's why people get upset. That's really it. So, yeah, that is one of the biggest con to some extent to the Cowboy Netflix one. But just to adaptation is... If your purpose is to put some agenda, send a like a subliminal message, then yeah, you got a problem there. Just saying that. Yeah, so those are the cons. So there you go. 
yeah so it is unfortunate or it's unfortunate depends on your perspective for me I don't really don't care about the show like I said I mean it's not really that good but to some extent I don't think that bad if the political was in there but again it was so it was bad that's why now there's a report saying that there's people are now might not consider doing adaptation from anime which you probably really shouldn't to some extent unless the creator themselves said can we do something to get more exposure because some of it don't like anime then there because that's actually one another kind that I forgot to mention is the creator did not have full control he said I only had like minimum control that's the biggest problem there in the case with the live action One Piece uh, what's his, the creator for that one did say he has full control he gave the blessing he had full control in the case with Cowboy Bebop from what I understand was it was Sunrise and he just said okay but then when he tried to ask, give them suggestion they ignored it and like I said he, he barely had control again disrespectful to the guy what do you think that's why he got cancelled just saying and for the people who were whining that oh the show got cancelled because of you haters fan whatever dude get alive those employees gotta get alive don't take it personal you had it coming you know this is what's gonna happen and you went for it again why do cowboy b-pop why not just do something original just saying so I mean it had it coming like I said so those are the problems of con again hopefully like a lot of people do say that they really should just tone back with the adaptation I mean unless the creator really wants to do it to some extent to get more exposure there you go I mean or better yeah just let the Japanese do it Japanese Hollywood because Hollywood right now like a lot of people said it's uh, it's questionable Anyway, with that, I'll see you guys later.